In this video, I want to answer the question, what is change control? Shift happens, things change. And I know that the ideal, particularly in traditional project management, is that we nail down the scope and we seal up the specifications of a project at the early stages, and then we deliver it and nothing changes, and that makes life very easy. But it is an ideal because the environment in which we're operating is constantly shifting. New technology becomes available, the market shifts, and there are new commercial pressures, there are new opportunities. Uh, politics means that there's new legislation, new regulation. Uh, society changes during the course of long projects. And consequently, it would be absurd if we fixed every aspect of our project during the planning stage and then we stuck to it rigorously. Change control therefore provides us with a process to control the necessary changes that happen during the lifetime of a project. Now of course what happens on a project typically is that things are going well and you know they're going well because that's when someone comes up to you and says hey Mike everything's going great the only thing is we've um, I've uh, you know changed our minds. Now, as a project manager, your first instinct is almost certainly to say, oh, it's fine, just, just leave it with me, I'll sort it out. Just do it. But of course, the problem with that is, where's the budget coming from for the extra work? Where's the time in the schedule going to come from? Where are you going to get the resources from? And what about all the additional risk? Perhaps it's safer to say, well, no, we can't do that. We've signed off our definition, we've signed off our plan, our specifications. We can't change anything. But of course, as we've seen, Sometimes you need to. So what do we need? We need the one thing that project managers crave above all else. We need control. And a change control process is what gives us that control. And it's a very simple process. And it starts with that question. Change your mind, want to do something different. And your answer to that isn't yes and it isn't no, it's thank you. And then you ask the person who's come up with the idea for change to document the two things they are best suited, best able to document. Firstly, what precisely is the change that they're asking for? Because you can't do anything until you know what it is they want. And secondly, what are the reasons why they believe this change is right? Is there a compelling, necessary reason to make the change? Or is there a compelling advantage and benefit in making the change? Now, once they've done that, you can take that clear articulation of what the change is and you can then work out you know what are the, the financial implications what are the schedule implications what are the resource implications what are the risks that arise from it and, and how does this impact other things that you know are going on outside of your project and and when you've got all the reasons why you should change and all the implications of change in terms of budget and schedule and risk and impact then you can take them to your decision makers and they can make an informed decision. And that's either going to be to accept the change or to reject the change. The only reason why they might defer a decision is because if they believe that you don't, haven't provided them with all the information they need to make a decision, in which case you have failed to a degree in your job. So if they decide to accept it, your stakeholder is happy because they've got what they want and you're happy because you've got the extra budget, you've got the extra scare time in the schedule, you've got acceptance of the risk, you've got access to the resources you need, you've done the planning, it's just a job. If on the other hand the decision is no, it's too risky, it's not enough benefit or whatever, then that's it I'm afraid. The stakeholder who asks for the change is going to be, I am sure, disappointed and many change control processes actually have a uh, a stage within them where the stakeholder can advocate in person to a, a board or a design authority group that makes the decision. They may be disappointed, but at least they know that this isn't you, the project manager, being capricious. There's been a robust process and it's auditable. But that's it. No change. Now, when there is a change to be made or whether there isn't a change to be made, every request goes into a change log which details the request that's made, the timings, the people concerned, the decision, and the implications for the budget and the schedule and anything else. And that change log creates your audit trail of all the changes and the decisions that are made, who made those decisions, and where we can find the evidence on which they based 
their decision. That, in short, is change control.